get sales lessons from experts and entrepreneurs go out there and be a spokesperson and the representative for the brand on how you can bring your a game in selling making sales requires putting yourself out there and being vulnerable to start and scale your business we need to negotiate for what we deserve this is ace the sales podcast and here's your host roshni burronia hey there so happy to have you joining me for today's episode where i have with me akansha bhargava ceo of pm locations it is going to be an interesting conversation because women in logistics is rare which makes selling harder but what was it like for her let's hear from akansha herself but before i bring her to the mic a quick reminder to follow is the says on your podcast listening app because when you do that it helps us take this podcast and the valuable conversations to many more entrepreneurs like yourself and now without further ado let's bring akansha on to the mic Hey Akansha I'm so delighted to have you on Ace the Sales podcast I know it won't be sufficient to introduce you as just CEO of PMR because you are so much more you are a leader who grew her organization from a turnover of 3 crores in 2007 to a closing of around 100 plus crores today who you are a speaker who inspires so many women entrepreneurs and you are a mom who denies to box her roles as a mother and an entrepreneur separately but i would like to throw the ball in your court and let you introduce yourself who is akansha bhat Hi Roshni so firstly thank you so much for having me over i think it's just the most incredible feeling of gratitude when i have this opportunity to talk about the years that went by and if if there is any value that i can provide to someone out there so thank you uh, it's a great feeling and uh, like you said uh, my journey has not just been about a ceo but so much more and that's exactly what i think entrepreneurship is all about you know you you know you we all see that there is this one designation out there who's running the show doing everything but there are so many roles that you fulfill when you're in those shoes you know you have to be a nurturer in your organization with not just a tagline of being the ceo and managing the business i think as a person i would define myself as someone who loves building people who loves the idea of working together who loves the idea of creating magic with teamwork and also has a certain standards of work and also every time we have a, a benchmark that we've achieved we are always looking up out there so someone who i think would like to keep raising the bar for not just self but for the team that works with us so it's very important to most importantly compete with self and not with your competition because everybody has their own journey and we need to always look at where we were before and where we are today so entrepreneurship for me has been a synonym of just being with people working together and it's been a synonym of creating better lives for everyone who's around us and uh, that's what has driven me that's what inspires everything and with if that is all in place then you know you're always doing the right kind of work your ethics are in place or you have an honesty in the team and you have a certain culture that you can be proud of so it all comes with the fact of building people together that's wonderful that's beautifully said so akansha before we deep dive into um, the conversation we like to start with a little behind the scenes act to just kick start our conversation it is called uh, the bts on ats segment which is behind the scenes on ace the sales which is just some light hearted questions to get a peep into the other side of you which uh, probably not many people know so are you willing to uh, go for that rapid fire questions just two three questions happy have very happy to take care of that <laughs> okay <laughs> Tell us one silly habit that you have which drives people around you crazy. I think it's always about what next. I wouldn't say it's silly but it's definitely a habit of, you know, if someone says okay, I've achieved this and I say okay, then what now? So it's not like it's great to have it. I'm someone who'll be like okay, what next are you thinking? So for me, it's always uh it's never like okay, great and done and we are okay, we are through. It's always like okay, what are we doing next? <laughs> so I would say not really, but I think a very uh, you know like a differentiated habit that I have as a as a you know member in the company, and 
and everybody knows that uh, you know this is how i would be reacting on something so so sometimes people don't know if they are great at achieving because they know the next target will come in right i mean if you don't know what you're doing next as an individual also there is something somewhere not right i'm not trying to say that you have to go all out and say okay this is what i've done so i have to be ambitious about next no this is not about stressing it out it's about knowing that okay there is something more than that i can achieve and that's the and that's the kind of confidence as a you know it's my job to give that confidence to the people otherwise uh, you know as a as a leader today you only do do this much you're only trying to make the best out of each one who's in your team and for that you really have to keep telling them that this is not enough you sure, can do so much sure. uh you originally are from kolkata akansha right so tell us your favorite place or memory from that city actually i was very small i was just eight when my father relocated to delhi but i definitely remember having jhal muri with my grandfather which car and uh, taking that double decker bus i think it was it will always be my memory of calcutta you know on the road side taking those muri in that cone shaped paper bags and uh, I loved it. I think I'm still a very, very big foodie. Street food is my thing to go for, and that started from Calcutta. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> so, uh, last question: Describe yourself in three words. I think three words. I would say extremely passionate as an individual, and that that is part of my every domain in life. It could be personal, professional, uh, individual, anything that I pick up. It has to have my two hundred percent, my love, my heart, my soul into it. It, it cannot be. half hearted it just cannot happen so passionate uh extremely resilient i think i'm someone who's always been very, very resilient i like taking challenges heads on and uh, i don't know if i would term it as a word but i think definitely a people person i think family friends people is too important to me in life so i'm just a people's like a go to person for everyone yeah that's nice passionate resilient and a people person amazing so thanks for uh, giving that peep into your other side uh, akansha so great now let's jump into another lane and look for some learnings and insights from you first of all uh, coming into a family business which was uh, i think it was started by your father uh, which was run a particular way for a long period of time and i'm sure when you came into it uh, it would have been an uphill task for you to bring in some reforms so talk us a little bit about the first few changes that you introduced in the company as you became the ceo this was 2007 i was just 21 years old so when a 21 year old walks in i mean i used to always go to my dad's office in summer vacations like be around but do nothing they just take yeah. their time and you know waste everybody else's time by chatting <laughs> <laughs> but when he was 21 um, when i started my first official day Uh, I still remember it was 30th April 2007. I was a 21 year old out of an MBA college. You know, world is a different lens altogether when you're in college. And uh, I was obviously known as boss's daughter. I had no identity of myself. And someone who you know was a very young girl, little girl, used to come to office when she was a baby. So nobody really thought that I was serious at what I was doing, and nobody took me seriously in the first place. And they were like. Okay, she's boss's daughter, and she will be just, you know, telling us. And but she doesn't know anything. And so, you know, there was a lot of challenge there to, I think, create your own place. But I think I always knew one thing that you cannot be sitting in a cabin and telling people what to do when you don't know anything yourself. So I started from like rock bottom. Like I learned how to even file documents, how to punch papers, how to write an email, how to work on Outlook. So I think there were so many basics that I and I was not ashamed to go to anybody and learn. I sat with every employee in the company back then, and I said, "Okay, listen, you know, tell me what you do." And in a way that it doesn't make them insecure. That okay, listen, I I don't want to teach everything to this girl, and what if tomorrow I don't get to work? So in a way of friendship, in a way of you know being a part of the team, I was not the boss. I was always a part of the team. So if, for me, the earlier early days were very important. to learn everything at ground level just like a fresher would learn just like someone who's at rock bottom in their life and somebody who knows nothing about professional world would learn so i used to spend many days in the warehouse and then i realized that if i live in delhi i will always be under somewhere under my dad's shadow right i mean there's always going to be protection like you have a driver to take you somewhere you'll have someone to guide you but if i move out from here i will actually know whether i'm worth 
being an entrepreneur what's doing what i'm doing because it's very important to be able to be honest to yourself that uh, is it something that you're being you know are you doing justice to is it something that you are totally committed to and you can be committed to all your life and uh, i know you like that's a long term commitment but something that will tell you that okay this is what i want to do and that feeling cannot come because it's a family business you know you know your dad's work very hard you have immense respect for it but that's not your calling yet so for me it was very important to find uh, that path that okay this is what i want to do so i moved to bangalore uh, back then it was a very nascent city not like how it is today it's going through shit right now so you know it's a very, very tragic but but back then the free roads and uh, you know there was a obviously a language challenge there was no gps out there a uh, but beautiful air and i think um, that city was still growing it was still a, a not the capital that is known today but it is uh, it was not the tech capital but it is definitely it was definitely a city which had a lot to learn from so i moved to bangalore at 21 uh, i was alone i set up the office had two people so it was just two people and two packers that's it so from there my journey began of being alone managing office managing warehouse finding my first client finding my first supplier myself and one and a half years i stayed in bangalore and i think that that's what exactly shaped me of who i am today because when you work hard from that level of finding that first customer you know bargaining with our supplier to give you credit terms employing people understanding their psyche talking to your packers having lunch with your crew and your supervisors i think that's where you sort of find whether this is something which will drive you because maybe today i don't do this at a regular basis but but root roots of this organization has been about that that everybody knows the uh, things that they are doing you know there's a lot of training there's a lot of learning out there so i think i then i lived in hyderabad for a year i lived in chennai for a year then i lived in ahmedabad for a year so i almost lived in nine cities of india for each year so my first eight eight years of my life were only on the road and i was traveling immensely so you know while i say the changes i think the first change that i made was as an mba i said my dad had a company called pm packers and movers and i said listen packers and movers cannot work because every tom dick and harry ends up saying that we are a packer and mover and you know if you even if you tell your security guard i want to shift they'll get you four guys in one tempo and they'll become a packer and mover so i said this name doesn't work let's call it pm relocations because relocations is more like complete it has more you know it's more like fancy and more importantly it covers like the entire domain of work that we want to do and there began began the another big battle where whoever i went to for work and they said are you coming are you alone is there someone joining you do you think you'll be able to manage workforce do you think you'll be able to manage this assignment and i'm like why am i even ask these questions because i'm a girl or because i'm so young i didn't know but it was probably both so i had a lot of challenges in getting there when when you know uh, breaking the barrier of the fact that this is possible by, by a girl because most of the people in today also are industries run by mostly men exactly exactly in fact that was one of the things that i wanted to ask you because even for people who are looking at the industry from outside like for people like us we hardly see any women in logistics and uh, you've been into that so in fact i wanted to like uh, deep dive into this as also that what has been your experience as a woman in logistics what were the challenges are the things told to you that oh you are a woman Uh, why are you doing this kind of a thing so what has been your experience if you can just elaborate on that you know like i said one was an uphill task of convincing people i could do it and not just within india but even overseas because we do international relocations right and the fact that you know you're moving people from singapore to us china to london india to india to india to you know germany or maybe wherever so there's a lot of trust that you need to build with both customers your supplier your partner and all over the world right because it's a lot of trust game you're move you're taking someone stuff for literally 3 months away from them so you you got to be good at what you're doing so one was that and second the biggest battle which continues to be today is the fact that relocation industry is not still categorized as an industry we're still part of logistics which we are technically not uh we are a high to hardcore service provider logistics is a part of our entire journey you know when you move someone's house someone's walking into your house we are packing we are doing the handyman services we are fixing their tv you know we are dismantling their furniture we are you know removing their geysers and stuff and then you're moving into another destination then we are settling everything back in their house putting back things in the shelf opening up everything 
again fixing everything that's in the house so it's actually a hardcore service because you need to be good at both sides of your team is entering someone's bedroom literally to pack their linen and everything and logistics is definitely a part of it but this industry is so unknown and that's why when when people have to find a relocation company they don't know who to go to because there's nobody who's created a name for themselves because it's such an unorganized business that we are in so i was part of multiple chain of problems right i would say challenges not problems but uh, one was obviously i had a team back with me who who sort of needed to be told that listen i am not boss's daughter i need to learn and i will make my place and i want to grow and i want to do this second was your customers who would want to trust who you want to find to trust you third was the world outside who told you okay listen you're an mba why are you even doing this this is not like you're not a transporter you're not a courier company and back then these were not not traditional businesses women get got into you know later on the whole boom of startups has happened and every small thing has been made into an app and it's become like a very glorified service but back then household goods moving even till date it involves transport and everyone but back then it was even more difficult like i have transporters and car carriers who literally have walked into my office wearing chappals you know so you know these are the kind of people we deal with and that's fine they they are also doing their business but you would not find polished people so an mba from singapore and all of that doesn't matter honestly it's all about how you how you are handling people at ground level and no b school can teach you till you learn it yourself so there were very layered problems that i went into and then of course scaling up a business a family business which was running a certain way to scale up and say listen i need to grow this now you need money whatever happens you still need money right you need to get better talent you need to create infrastructure you need to have working capital to run the cash flow because we do corporate corporate is or b2b they will pay you like an 100 days 120 days so how do you run your business for those days so we had i had multiple things that were running parallelly to sort of you know move on but i think as i said if you're passionate and your intent is in place you just keep going and when we kept going kept going everything just came around you know we found everything happening for us when we tried looking for it when we wanted loan we we went out to the market we went to the banks we got one obviously there was always a hunch, hunch to pay it and there's always a problem when you're struggling with working capital but i think you have to just keep going and you know when you talk about this whole women journey about any kind of business uh, yes till date it's the same story um people still don't consider women uh very very capable in senior roles because there are multiple challenges right like i have a child now i got married in the middle so the questions were not around or the rumors were not around the fact that uh, this is going well but but even before i knew i i heard a rumor that i have already left the business because i'm pregnant and i'm like where did this start from you know because obviously nobody expects you to be running a company of so many people and still being able to mother you know being a good mother and and uh, managing a family and i don't know so many other things but i think uh, i hope the world changes i hope the, the outlook changes i got my child to office when she was 2 months old and she's been with me throughout because i don't consider being a mother and working two different roles of my life i think it's just so interlinked that i can't be breaking it up and saying this is work this is not work you're always in both worlds together right like if my child is in school also somewhere in my head i'm thinking about okay would she have eaten her lunch what what would she do be doing you can't be switching off from that domain of your life ever right and similarly for work if i'm with her i'm wherever i am i'm always in my head thinking okay this is this was the things to do what are the pending tasks so i think uh, you know generalizing it I, i yes i am because it's actually true but many many industries still lack women and one mine is definitely on top of the list because it's it's to do with a lot of uh, ground level workers blue collar staff a lot of people who are not speaking english also so i think and then you have clients who are like the ceos of company who you are relocating so you are working with both worlds so you you have to have training modules for both sides of the coin for, for in this industry Hey there hope you've been loving the episode so far just wanted to take a moment to invite you to Ace the Sis club which is a tribe of women small business owners who dream dare and do amazing stuff if that's you which i'm sure you are just sign up on the link given in show notes to join the waitlist and stay tuned for the updates and now back to the episode
That's so interesting. And that's why we need uh, more women role models like you. And we need to put more spotlight on uh, people like you who are actually uh, breaking those barriers and getting into uh, industries and verticals which are heavily male dominated. I wanted to uh, uh, drill down on two specific things that you mentioned in your conversation. First was about uh, getting the first few clients uh, as a newbie. And uh, secondly, about the fact that you... Uh, rebranded or just turned around the messaging and positioning of your company as a PM Packers and Movers to PM Relocations. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about that because this is a very key part of building up a business as to what the branding and the messaging is because it's very important for business owners to understand what their real business is. So like they say, Anyone who is into the makeup industry, they are not into make uh, the business of making people look better, but they are in the business of making people feel better about themselves. People are not into the coaching business, they are into the business of transformation. So how has that clarity set in for you and how did you uh, even were able to imagine this or strategically arrive at this uh, concept of that you are not a movers and packers business but you are a relocations business you are a service uh, into the service industry and not just a logistics industry logistics is a part of it so talk to us a little bit about that because it will help the listeners get clarity about how to position and brand their business and what is their real business I think if you don't uh, know what is your messaging and what are you doing, then it's really not going to give you the results that you ever want in life. So I think um, for me, what happened was very early. Like I said, I wanted to go out there and think whether I want to do this all my life, whether this is my calling. It was very important to find that connect. One question that I always wanted to answer to myself was why am I an entrepreneur and why am I doing what I'm doing? The first question that I had, why I'm an entrepreneur, that answered me when, um, you know, one fine day, one of my packers invited me to their home for one of their child's birthday and I went. And that entire colony literally came and touched my feet and they were giving me blessings. And I said, I don't think I've done anything in my life to deserve this. And I realized the kind of impact you create in people's life when you're in that position. And that's a very important responsibility. So every time we were failing, we had a bad pay, we had a loss, we had some account not working with us, some, some, you know, something that didn't go right for our business. And I had to come back to work to, you know, show my face to the team and say, this has happened. I just thought of my team, of the root, the ground level person, the most, I would, would, would say probably the poorest one in my team, who's managing his entire family because we are getting, because he's getting paid by PMR. And I said, I cannot go wrong. I have to go back and work. I have to work for that guy because he has to pay his house rent. He has to pay his kids schooling. I cannot go wrong. I have to stand tall. So for me, the only reason I have stood tall in all these problems, you know, growing the business, fighting the battle of money and people, whatever come came my way has only been for that, that last mile person in my business who's truly, truly only dependent on the company for his income in his life. And I see that picture in my head and it still drives me very, very crazy. So, you know, I just feel as an entrepreneur, it's very important to know why you're doing something. I think it's a very personal thing to me. I'm not saying everybody has to feel the way I feel or X, Y, Z and it's the right way. But there is something that, that sort of pulls you out and says, okay, this is where I want to take all the stress, why I want to do everything and why is this uh, driving me? And secondly, the business. You know, I realized the need of creating a name for my industry. I realized the need that people wanted to move their house. They wanted a good service provider, but they didn't know what it is all about. So I said, there is such a big need here to be educated about this industry, that there is a proper industry for something like this. And that's where it all began. And I said, if I don't know why am I doing this packing and moving, I mean, you can always pack and move and that's it. But our tagline says we move families. So I realized the connect that we make with a family. You know, when someone relocates, their entire family, kids, in-laws, parents, their entire house is moving with us. And it's so important to make their transition beautiful because it's a huge life change. So it's not about packing and moving. It's about making that life better when they move to another country, another city, and they feel 
we are welcomed because we are literally their first friend they make the packers who come into their house and they're like okay you know you're new here what's going on and it's such an important conversation that you have with them you know the feeling of safety the feeling of belonging there there's so many things that we touch upon very subtly we don't do it loudly but it's a very under the covers kind of a feeling that you give someone and for me all of that started playing in my mind and i said and you know everybody tells me you know you need like when i tried to build marketing and said you need money to do this you need money for branding you need money for advertisement i said i don't have it and what do i do could i not do it so when i started my own facebook page which was 2012 we had one follower obviously which was my mother and today we are we are close to i think about 3 lakh followers and trust me it's all organic we've not paid a single penny because we didn't have it and link when you look at my linkedin profile and facebook profile and i think it's always been about conversations that we we have done with our crew with our team about our clients about our journey and that's what has touched someone out there and said listen this company values its people this company values its processes and they take pride in who they are that trust already builds in with someone who wants to move his house because they want to work with someone who's confident and proud of what they do and not someone who's just doing it ki if i am giving getting this much money and i'll do it so the the business that we are into specifically which is such a touch point for human emotion it was so important to connect on emotions and uh, to everybody out there whoever is in whichever business it's very important to know your touch points where is what is the impact you're trying to create what is your intent behind doing something in life and if you can answer those two three questions to yourself not to anybody else you will exactly know what you want out of your branding nobody can tell you how your brand should look except you there are great people out there who have done uh, who will give you great philosophies about how it should look what it should look you know there are a lot of consultants right i mean there are people who are experts in their profession advertising advertising and branding but why some people get it right some people get it wrong because the founders or the one who's running that show can actually visualize what they want their brand to look like and when they can their messaging is always intact because then you get an expert to just format you know format it for you so for us we had no money to spend on all these things that any i'd rather pay salaries and government taxes to avoid penalty than pay somebody for marketing because ours is not a need creation business it's a need based business aapko shift karna hai so you will shift but if you don't then nobody can make you excited enough to say okay let me shift my house because this is a great service as the founder to connect back to your intent your purpose and then communicate it to your team so that they are aligned to it so that they are able to connect with that same emotion they don't make that entire exercise a very transactional act uh, of just moving the boxes but it is more of a uh, trust and emotional connect they have with the client because uh, it's a very very emotional moment for the entire family and uh, and the most important things they are looking for is safety and trust and it's important for any business owners to connect back to that same intent and purpose with which they have started their business so that they are able to connect with their customers with the same emotion that's uh, that's very true um another question i wanted to um Uh, take up with you was uh, when you said that uh, it was very very difficult or very challenging for you uh, to get those first few customers first few business partners and corporates when you moved to bangalore so talk to us a little bit about since this is a sales podcast uh, so what was your approach to selling your services because uh, a it was uh, a new industry for you b people had very different notion about who will come to sell to them definitely it was it will not be a woman and uh, thirdly you were very very green and very very fresh so how was your approach to selling what was your mantra to sell so roshni sales has changed so much over the last 10 years right um, when my when i started our uh, sales used to be like just park your car one place and walk and find your client literally like that literally as simple as it sounds today with the world of linkedin with the world of social media your personal connect so many more uh, avenues of networking i think it's become a little bit easier to find your person i mean imagine a company like 
you know, Procter and Gamble or like a Microsoft, which is like a huge portion of people. How do you know your right person? You can't. Because, and even if you go to a security guard and you ask, they will not entertain you. So, so 10 years back, sales was actually very hard. It was actually going door to door and saying, listen, I do this. Can you please provide me your number? Can I please have your details and can we connect? I still remember when I was in my college, my B school, uh, SPG in Singapore, and I had some companies coming for placement. Back then, I knew that I wanted to help my dad and join him. And you will not believe I had all the HR cards with me. And I was not someone who had a responsibility. But I, did, but I took them. I kept them. And when I came to Bangalore or any other city, I wrote to everybody saying, this is what I'm doing today. And out of that, I still remember the lady in Madhura government. She was part of our recruitment team. She wrote to me. She said, come and meet me. She led me to the admin. Admin led me, led me to the procurement and I got the first contract from them. So I think as an individual, if you have to have the hunger, you have to find opportunities. Because no formula is good enough to say, okay, this is how you sell, you'll get to it. No. You have to find every little opportunity to be extremely aggressive to your business. And there were times when my friends used to tell me, if you meet any new person, the only thing you talk about is your work. I said, why not? So I think you need to be shameless completely and say, okay, I need my business. I think it has to be a thin line of being irritating. I get that. And I would definitely tell everyone out there that you should get the hints right. The way you approach someone, how you talk, how you even shake your hands, uh, how much body, uh, you know, contact you should make in your first meet it's so these things are important today because the world has changed so much but i think the the formula is still about being aggressive going out there telling the world what you do and finding your customers that's not changed at all like you know you get so many calls from for credit cards most of the time you'll say okay i don't need one but there's one call one voice that will hold you back that voice has something special in that 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 kind of uh, takes you and say, okay, listen, let me talk to this guy and understand what he wants. And that is the difference that guy is making to his company. Uh, and everybody has their own personality, right? It's no no two people can have the same voice and similar way of doing things. So don't copy anyone, please. Uh, make your It's your own thing. And you, if the day you start copying and saying, my boss does it this way, let me do it this way, it will not work out because it has to be you. It has to be your personality that has to come out to someone because the other person only goes with you because he trusts you and then he trusts your company even if you represent the biggest brand you know even if you're selling like uh, you know like a product from uh, say mac lipsticks to a consumer you go to the shop right you're you're buying lipsticks and you're buying cosmetics and products you're you're going to mac knowing mac is the best you are happy with the serve the product and the quality but if the salesperson is not there they're around somewhere chatting being on the phone or something you lose, you lose the uh, absolute uh, risk. You'll go to another person because even though you like Mac, even though you trust that brand, but that person is not interested to, to give you that commitment. And vis-a-vis -vis someone who's at this shop, that brand you've never seen, you've never experienced, you've never had, uh, 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 you know, you've never heard of them. But that girl out there is so sweet and she's so confident of her product. And she's trying to come to you every time and saying, listen, can you give us one chance and come and I'll give you a trial. You are all automatically attracted to that person. And you may just end up buying it because of that wonderful approach and trust that the girl gave you. So I think it's a very, very clear thought out there that please be yourself. Um, don't just live under the umbrella brand that I am working for a big brand and I have a great product and that's why people will buy it. No, they will not. You know, product sales are very different. Service sales are very different. Uh, industrial sales are different. I get it. Banking, ka, there's a different system. I, the product systems can all be different. But what in the end matters is how much can you look into someone's eye and say, I have the best product in the market. And you can trust. Can you, if you can do that, you will have your client for life. Those are some very important insights and learnings you shared uh, towards the end, Akansha. That uh, be yourself, carry your charisma. And... Uh, and just uh, bring your whole self and confidence to the conversation. Uh, that's what we keep repeating on this podcast as well. That it's all about your authentic selling. It's about bringing yourself to that moment, to that conversation. Thank you so much for uh, having these, uh, this conversation. I would just like to add one thing. Um, it's also important to keep sustaining it. You know, sometimes we think that we've achieved it, we have our numbers, we are hitting our targets, we're overdoing our targets and it's all great. But trust me, if you can 
be that young aggressive person who took away someone's business then someone else can also be as hungry as you or maybe more hungry than you can take away your business so always keep sustaining i always tell my team that don't be complacent that you have it all now this client is for you with or with it's with you for all all their life no nothing like that ever happens right someone will always be better than you out there who will take your business so you need to keep keep doing better every day so that is charisma confidence without complacency awesome great great uh, insight akansha thank you so much it was a delight to have this uh, conversation with you thank you so much for being on is the sales podcast and that's a wrap thank you so much for listening to today's episode if you found any value in today's episode then remember to recommend is the sales podcast to at least one of your business buddies you never know what insight they will get that can help them in their business so do some good karma today finally a loud shout out and thank you to the production team of done for you podcast who helped me in bringing this show to you if you too are looking to start your podcast for the business get in touch with dfip from the link given in show notes join me in the next episode for yet another conversation that can help you fall in love with selling till then take very good care of yourself this is your host roshni baronia signing off